All right, so we're ready to chop the mortise. I've got it laid out. I'm sure there's faster ways to lay it out, but I don't know those ways. So what I want to do now is take the chisel along all four edges to define it. And this just needs to be very light, just a little like that. Don't need to do much. I've already got that side with the knife. So I'll just take around this edge. Just pop the whole way down. Next thing you want to do, you want to take your bevel and you want to face the bevel like this. I think you can see that. So you put it right on the edge. Just give it a good little bit of a tap. Move over a bit. Hit it a few more times. Move over a bit. Hit it a few more times. And you keep doing this until you're about a half an inch away. Then you can lever up and you can start prying out your waist. I'm going to finish this first bit and then I'm going to go sharpen this because it's duller and I remember it being. You just pry your bit of waist out every time. You're not ruining any of your good wood because you're prying up, you're prying onto your waist. Pry. I'd say we're already a quarter inch deep. And remember, this is a completely through mortise. It goes all the way through. Each time I pry some out, it gets deep. And you want to be conscious all the time of not destroying your chisel by prying too hard. So you've got to be paying attention to how hard you pry. But even with a semi-dull chisel, which I'm going to go sharpen it immediately after this clip, I'm still getting through at a pretty decent speed. And I have no clue what power tool you'd set up to do this. But I'm sure those of you that use all power tools can figure it out in some way. I don't know. Don't know what you'd use. See there I'm into a small knot, so it's very difficult with this chip. Never trust factory shot. But now I'm almost to the edge here. So what I want to do is kind of go like this. And try and get that down to the approximate level of the rest of the back. Like so. Now we're down to pretty much the same level. Maybe once more we'll do that. Alright, now the idea is here. Let me pick you up. The idea, if your chisel is sharp enough, it starts very shallow here and gradually gets deeper. If it was sharpened, like my other chisels, which I don't know why I missed that one, it's the only three quarter I have too, it should be down about an inch deep on this side. You go to about halfway through, you flip, and you go the other half. And then you've got your mortise chop. And your tenon. I'm going to use a handsaw to cut that, but you just go to the width, cut, 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 and then you've got your piece. So I'm going to go sharpen that, and I guess I'll have the rest of the video up tomorrow, because it's going to take me a while to get all these cut. Bye. You see that? Okay. Well, let me move this out of the way. So I've got it set up. I'm going to try and cut it with you on the table. I might have to move because I don't know how much this is going to vibrate the camera. Recording. Okay. So what I've done is 
one around. I've marked N. My legs ended up three by three. I've went and I marked three and a quarter because I want this rounded over a bit. And I marked it all the way around both sides. And then what I've done here is I've centered my chisel on here so I get the exact width of the chisel, put two marks. So we're going to be cutting down these marks to that mark. So let me finish transferring all the lines. Just check with the chisel, make sure. Hey! That was my idiot brother shutting off my lights. But you want to check with the chisel and see we're not perfect there. We're perfect down here, but we're not there. So we just want to make sure we're perfect, which we are here. We want to transfer our line down. We could also just measure N38, so I didn't even think of that till now. Put a mark down here and a mark up there. And that would make it even a bit easier yet. So there's the mark. There's the mark. Check. We're dead on. So next thing we're going to do, that piece gets cut out. Put an X on every piece it gets cut, every piece it gets removed. And that's what we're going to be ending up with. So let me get that clamped up and set up, and we'll start cutting. All right, that's where we're going. All right, let me get the rest of it cut. All right, so it fit. And I got a, whoa, don't do that. I got a nice, clean shoulder line on there, except for a little bit of a deviation right in there. I hope you can see that. And then we got coming out about this far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take hand plane, put a chamfer on all the edges. Then I'm going to take a file and just round it over, give a nice, smooth round. Let me see if I can't pop this out of here and show you. A nice, tight fit. Okay, yep. So, that side sawed fine, so I didn't have to do much to that. That side I had to take my chisel and really smooth it out. But, it works. Just had to really smooth that side out, but it works. Hopefully, since I gotta cut this one, and I gotta cut one more like this, then I gotta do two more with the haunch tenons on it. Nope, I messed up. I gotta do three like this and one with the haunch tenon. Because I want a tail vise, so it's gonna have to be down, so it'll just be a normal mortise and tenon. Hopefully, by the time I do three of them, I'll be pretty good at them. So, uh, well, I'll sh show you the claw. You'll see why I'm a little tired and can't think of what I'm trying to say. I might show you the clock. You can't zoom in with this camera unless you stop the video and do it. It's bedtime. It's about an hour past bedtime. I'm tired. I've been up since about 6 this morning, so I'm ready to go to bed. So I'll start on the video tomorrow. I'll do some more on the bench. I got the other apron glued up. And Tuesday I'm going to Lowe's to get the last of my stuff. So yeah, we'll have this bench done within the next week. See you in the next video. Well, we're taking a small break from the bench because I built picnic tables. That's how I make money. So I just spent 30 minutes milling up some boards. White pine. So let's get them ripped down to size.
So now I plane them. That's the next thing I do. I'm just going to do the short one because it's kind of boring to watch the plane. And my on-off switch doesn't work. I'm going to put a regular switch on later, but I just got to plug it in to start it. <laughs> So would you rather a picnic table made out of this, 2x4 and that great of stuff, or out of this nice white pine? Planed up nice, didn't it? Yeah. Big difference in what it looks like. And it's a lot cheaper to make it out of the white pine anyway, because it mills so quick. Alright, we'll probably get back to the workbench. I want to finish. All right, so I've got both of the bottom bits of the legs done and stand up, so I've cut the mortises and tendons. What we have left to do here yet is we've got to round over these because these tendons are going to show. They need to be rounded. So let me pop one out here and I'll show you how we round them over. You probably won't be able to see me doing it. I know you can't see me doing it. Want me to hold the camera so you can do it? Pop that out. Take these aside for a while. Not necessary right now. Alright, so I've got my plane. So I'm just using a block plane in this case. But what you want to do is you want to come in at about this angle. You just you're not trying to champ, you're trying to round. So you got to work your way across like that, and you'll get a nice little bit of a round. You just want to do that on all the sides like this. There's a workshop helper. Well, rather, a workshop problem, but you get the point. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 